and all students and staff. At this time, we are conducting an internal lockdown. This is not a drill. Please initiate lockdown at this time. Hello, and welcome to All Dainty Creepypasta. My name is CZ, and I started this series one year ago when I brought you those first three Halloween horror stories. This time, I'm back with a scary clown creepypasta, so whatever you're doing this Halloween, turn the story on in the background for some extra chills. Let's dig right in. As a kid, I never really understood why some of my classmates were afraid of clowns. I didn't really find them scary. Not that I found them funny, either. Most of them just looked kind of goofy and dumb. I remember having this exact argument with my best friend Kevin at the lunch tables in elementary. His argument was always that I needed to see the movie It in order to understand, but being in second grade at the time, my parents would never let me watch it. I actually remember on Halloween, some of the older kids in the neighborhood dressed up as clowns and went around scaring trick-or-treaters. Maybe I just had thick skin, but I remember one of them chasing our entire friend group away, and me being left on the sidewalk laughing at their expense. But anyways, this story takes place in November of that second grade year, just after Halloween. We were sitting in math class, boring as ever. When situations like this arise, which were quite often during math, Kevin and I would meet in the bathroom and trade baseball cards. We had a system. One of us would give the signal and we would stagger our bathroom requests as not to raise suspicion from our teacher. On this particular occasion, Kevin had gone off to the bathroom first and I gave it a good five minutes before raising my hand. As I was waiting to be called on, our teacher, Mr. Davis, was interrupted by the sound of the intercom, which was strange because they usually only did announcements at the beginning and end of the day. Attention all students and staff. At this time, we are conducting an internal lockdown. This is not a drill. Please initiate lockdown at this time. Our teacher was pretty calm with his response, walking over to the door and locking it. He told us all to line up against the back wall and keep quiet as he crossed the room to pull down the blinds. I figured he had been through many lockdown drills before and this probably wasn't anything big. We had a lockdown at my old school once and it turned out to be a parent who just forgot to sign in. We waited like that for about five minutes. One kid asked Mr. Davis how much longer it would be and he got a hard shh from our teacher, signaling that no talking would be tolerated. It was about this time when I remembered that Kevin was still in the bathroom. I debated in my head on whether I should bring this to the teacher's attention, but was ultimately too scared after seeing that other kid get scolded for making a peep. That might sound kind of ridiculous given the circumstances, but keep in mind I was only 7 years old at the time and I was still very intimidated by authority. We waited in silence for a little while longer. With each minute that passed, the situation got more tense. I started to feel anxiety, butterflies in my stomach. That's when there was another announcement on the intercom. This circus music started playing over the intercom. And then after that, there was what sounded like laughter in the background. One of the girls in the class asked Mr. Davis what was going on. He told her to keep quiet, but his voice cracked and he stuttered in saying so. That may have actually been the scariest part of the whole ordeal for me. Being a kid and seeing an adult, and on top of that, someone who you're supposed to feel safe with being visibly shaken like that, it was terrifying. I guess I wasn't the only one who felt that way. I could hear sniffles coming from one of the other kids like they had been crying. Abruptly, the music just stopped. We were all sitting on the floor in a line in the corner of the room. I actually closed my eyes as if that would somehow help me, but nothing could block out the breathing that I heard blaring over the school intercom. Until it stopped. We sat in silence for a while longer, hearts racing, minds racing faster. The silence was broken by a slam and a group of screams. The sound traveled from down the hall. At this, I opened my eyes to see Mr. Davis jump up and push the big wooden teacher's desk from across the room in front of the door. I noticed tears streaming down his cheeks as he did so. I started to feel sick to my stomach as the anxiety continued to build. Footsteps approached from down the hallway. They stopped near our door. 
I could see a shadow on the wall. Someone was standing out there. I could tell by the shape that it was the shadow of a clown. After a short pause, it seemed like the shadow had disappeared and I started to feel a little bit of relief that the clown had walked away. There was a bang on the door and suddenly standing at the door window was a terrifying looking clown with bright white face paint, a huge cartoony toothy smile painted on his face to contrast the cold, evil looking smirk on his actual lips. He was somewhat overweight and wore a big baggy clown suit. The whole class screamed as he repeatedly tried to open the door. He went from trying to wiggle the doorknob free to rearing back and trying to kick in the wooden door, the class screaming each time he did so. It realistically didn't last too long before he gave up and moved on, but it felt like forever to me at the time. That was the last we saw of the mysterious lockdown clown. But in all of the hysteria, I completely forgot about Kevin. The lockdown lasted for another 20 minutes or so until each room was cleared. They made the announcement over the intercom, telling us the lockdown was over and teachers could resume classes. They didn't actually ever say what happened, probably not wanting to raise any panic. A few minutes later, Kevin appeared at the door and looked like an absolute wreck. His hair was literally standing up on end. He had dark circles around his eyes and tears streaming down his face. His entire body was shaking. I'd never seen someone looking so disheveled. Class was once again interrupted so that our teacher could escort Kevin to the nurse. He didn't come back to class after that, and his parents ended up holding him out of school for a full three weeks to recover. He came back just before winter break. I asked him what happened a couple of times, but he always just told me that he didn't want to talk about it. He ended up coming to school for the rest of second semester before his family moved away at the start of that summer. He was just never quite the same after that. We never got an official story on what had happened, only a swirl of rumors that the intruder had never actually been found. I shuddered to think about what would have happened if Mr. Davis hadn't pushed the desk up along the door. Anyways, I remembered about this story all these years later because I oftentimes cut through this park on the way home from the bus station. They had a carnival going on over the weekend. It was closed now, but it was about 2 a.m. as I cut through the fairground. One of the ticket booths had a light that had been left on, the only light in the entirety of the area for that matter. And that's when I saw a clown crash up against the glass and stare at me with those wide eyes. It may have been just some teenagers or YouTubers pulling a prank, but I ran as fast as I could and didn't stop until I was locked inside of my room because clowns terrify me now. Thanks for listening to All Dainte Creepypasta. Your total for this episode comes out to $27, but if you like this video right now, I'll waive that fee and give you everything you just listened to absolutely free. The creepy clown music was done by the talented Robert Austin, and the outro music you're listening to right now was performed by Naoya Sakamata. I hope you enjoyed the October upload marathon and what little time you have left this Halloween. Remember to subscribe to CZ's World for new horrors every week, ring that death bell for notifications, and I'll see you in the next one, assuming we both survive.